Today, we're here today with Jan, the one, the only Janice Dickens in the world's first supermodel. How are you, Janice? I am so excited to be on your show because I'm a big fan. First, I just want to ask you, you you're you known for coining the world's first supermodel term. Do you, you still stand by that, right? Because I know some people have tried to be like, there are other supermodels, but that's... No, I, mean, I promise you I stand by it because I coined the word. You know, there are, of course there's other supermodels. You know, there and there were before me, but I, you know, I said to my agent back in 1982 with the elite agency, she said, You are working night and day, day and night. Who do you think you are, Superman? And I said to her, No, honey, I'm supermodel, and you'll refer to me as supermodel. So we started a supermodel division that, that did, only took girls that did catalog. R runway, editorial, advertising, and uh, a spokesperson. Right, right. Okay, there you have it from Janice herself. You know, next month is the 20th anniversary of the premiere of America's Next Top Model, it, May oh, 2003. Yeah. When you were on, a judge on Top Model, you said like you were so, you were kind of asked to be like the Simon Cowell of like... When Tyra Banks called me into her office, she had my book, No Lifeguard of Duty, and she had mm -hmm. post-its in my book. Because there were a lot of great, great sections that could be turned into vignettes on her show. And she didn't tell me that was what her plan was. But I was seeing throughout the show things that I'd written in my book. And she just basically took it out word for word, smize with your eyes and, you know, things like that. So it you was, had smize in your book? Yeah. Before, the, the I, things, that came, things that came from me. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it was okay. But after, after a couple of years... I went up to Tyra politely and asked her for parody as a writer. Uh, that that I, I I if you want me to if you want to use what I've written, which you have, um, I've got a lot more ideas that I could uh, I can I can become a producer as well as work on the panel uh, for some of the shoots, which would be doable. And she turned her back on me for that, and then I got fired the next season. Oh, and uh, have you and Tyra talked since? No, don't mess with the money. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> not with her. So, th so you were let go, and then you guys haven't you haven't chatted since. Yeah. No, it's okay. I wish her well. I wish her well. She's a smart lady. She's done a lot for kids. You know, she's done. A, she's done a lot of harm for kids. She's done a lot of good things for kids. And um, harm meaning because of the, the model, like the. The show or something else? Criticisms. The criticisms. Oh. You know, the criticisms could cut cut deep. Right. And like she didn't come in. She didn't come in and soothe the nerves after she cut. She made those cr criticizing remarks. So the girls are all shattered from the day of like, oh my god, I'm, I'm never going to make it. It's the, if I keep walking the way I'm walking, or you name it. And I, I've heard it in my ear on the microphone. I was asked to be the Simon Cowell on that show, and I did it. It was like the negative, the negative version of Miss Sweet um, Susie Cakes, Tyra Banks. Did you base some of those critiques like on stuff that you heard yourself? I was in the modeling world a lot longer than she was, and I did a lot more important. I did a lot of more important jobs, like working with Horst Terrell, Avedon Penn. Scabulo, all these guys way before she did. And I had that, I had that, that, that vibe that I could go out and pose, you know, and just pose. And it's all about posing. Mm -hmm. It really is all about posing, standing still, uh, hitting your marks, uh, working that runway till, till your feet bleed. And, um, you know, I'd sit next to her and I, you know, when there was a, a like, a, a inconvenient moment, I'd say, shut up, girl. I did Vogue, you did L. Oh, how did she take that? <laughs> she didn't like it. She didn't like it at all. Would you do anything different if you were to do, be on the show now? Like No, no, because there were long hours we served. We worked very, very hard. In one of your shows that you were on The Surreal Life, way in the back, and you got into a famous, you and Omarosa got into it a bit. And obviously, a lot in the news lately is with Omarosa's boss. Did you ever have any run-ins in the '80s in New York with Trump or in your reality dealings? Would you? Did you ever meet up? Ever have I, any? I once stole Trump's limousine without knowing it was his limousine. There was a snowstorm um, in New York, a nor'easter they they call it, 
Right. And there were no taxi cabs anywhere except except I was sitting there in the cold for like a couple hours trying to get a, a taxi, and I, there were there were none available. And so I just said, "Come on, just get in this limo. I'll just drive it a few blocks." <laughs> So my girlfriend got in the back. She's going, you're crazy. You're crazy. I said, I know. I'm swear. I never driven a limo. I was you drove it. Out. Yeah, I was. Oh, you didn't get out. in. You didn't just get in it. You drove it. No, I drove the limo <laughs> a few blocks down the street, swerving, you know, making fishtails in the street. And there was no, no one on the road. It was, okay. it was, it was, it was a real storm. Right. Right. So, uh, I remember this, uh, Clearly, because I was going there to meet John F. Kennedy Jr. for dinner, and I didn't want to miss that date, honey. Wow. No way in history. How now? How now? How now? Who knew? Yes, he was divine. Yes, I did kiss him. Nice. Oh, my God. So, wait, and this turned out to be Trump's limo? It was Trump's limo. I found out the next day in every newspaper in the, in the United States, he was an honest thief. There were millions of dollars worth of fur coats and fax machines and jewelry in the back seat, which were left untouched. There were no, there were no fur coats or jewelry or, or, or mink coats in the back seat. Well, I would have seen them. Uh, I'm wait, he, they said his, they said that they were stolen out of the limo. Yeah, they said they were stolen out of the limousine, but there was nothing there. That's so wild. maybe he pulled a fast one with his insurance company. Who knows? <laughs> Wow. Oh my God. You have, that's amazing. That's a crazy story. I'm not going to go to jail for this because the statute of limitations <laughs> is over 10 years. He has a, a bigger issue to deal with today, I think. Now you're go, branching to music, right? Like, you, Oh yeah. So you yeah. have, you've released two songs so far, I believe? I've got Get Into It. It's a real dance song. That's Get a new into one. It. Yeah. And it's, it's dancing. And I've got uh, another I one. coined it, right? Yeah. I coined it. And um, what inspired you to get into, like, become a new dance club diva? Because I love the gays. And I love, I love the gay community so much. And the gay community, without the gay community, I wouldn't be sitting here. Will you, like, perform it at, a, at gay clubs or anything like that? Do you plan well, on doing it? I've already done Rocco's and, and Heart in okay. here. I went to, I went to um, Long Beach and did Hamburger Mary's. I did Hamburger Mary's here. I did... I just got back from Palm Springs and I did uh, Oscars. Uh, so I, I've been performing all over. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so I think hopefully the white party's coming up. Yeah. you. So you and, might do a number uh, there, perform there? I hope I hope to get into one of the clubs. The new song, uh, Get Into It, it says things like walk, dance, prance, slay, which definitely... Woo! which definitely ties in like modeling and like gay world, gay slang. Um, so you're, you're touching on those things. I obviously walk, walk, bring runway and all that. Um, walk, dance, prance, slay, <laughs> woo, get into it. Yeah. And definitely like, even like, I think RuPaul's Drag Race, you know, like I know you love drag queens, you have drag queens in love, one of your videos. Love, love. Um, but RuPaul sort of used Top Model as a blueprint for Drag Race, his show Drag, you know, the panel, the, the you know, Lip Sync oh, for yeah. Your Life is sort of like a take on how Tyra would hold the photographs and like. Um, that's, that's cool. That's cool. It's, uh, you know, if I were Tyra, I'd be really proud. Right, right. Would you ever consider being a guest judge on Drag Race? I have been a guest judge. Oh, on okay. Drag Race. Correct but me. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'd love to come back. I'd really love to come back. I'd be a different person this time. <laughs> Were you yeah. hard, too harsh back then? <laughs> More sober. You have a reality show coming up too, right? You're, or I'm working on it. It's hush hush. Oh, hush, okay. Hush, hush, hush. Oh, it's to be determined. No. Yeah. To be okay. Determined. Okay. I'm working on it. <laughs> Several weeks, you'll hear from me. Okay. Fantastic. Would you ever <laughs> go on Dancing with the Stars? You know, oh, Tyra wow. was the host. Tyra was the host recently. Tyra was the host. I, listen, I, I would break my ankles. I know I would. I First of all, I can't wear heels as much as I could back in the day. So it'd be hard even for, my, for me to find a pair of shoes that wouldn't like kill my corns. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, we'd love to see you on there. But bring uh, out your old Studio 54 moves. I may have to just do that for my days. Will there be a music video for your new song? Yes, there'll be definitely a music video for all songs. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. 
Well, you're a sensation on TikTok these days. A whole new audience is discovering your. I know. Your- I, I get. I have my makeup beat on every night, and I do just snarky TikTok uh, vignettes. And it's fun. I'm having the time of my life. Believe me. Okay. One last question. You can only go to one concert this summer. It's either Beyonce's concert or Madonna's uh, celebration concert. Which would you Madonna. go? Madonna. Madonna. No Hands question. down. Hands down, Madonna. Come on. <laughs> the queen. For, her, for her age. Look what she's done. How she's transformed herself every decade. She just keeps transforming herself, pushing for new horizons, being a director, being a photographer, being a being a, an author, being a being a singer, being a dancer. She's done she has she wears so many hats. It's Madonna, baby, all the way. Have you guys have you ever met or have you hung out ever? I have met her and I photographed her. She's gorgeous. Yeah. She's, she's just I don't know what's what's going on with her look these days. She looks completely different. But to each his own. To each his own, yeah. We love Madonna, I, Queen of I Pop. Love oh. that. I love that and I'll always support her. And now you're following in her musical shoes. <laughs> yeah, <hardly. laughs> Can That's you sing it. us a, a bo- sing us again a, a line from your new song? What's that? Walk, dance, prance, slay. Woo! What? Get into it. Walk, dance, prance, slay. Woo! Get into it. Love it. Love it. All right. Thank you so much, Janice Dickinson, the world's first supermodel here on Queer Tea. All the best, Janice. Put the word out. I want to do some white parties. <laughs>